Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel, everybody. You haven't seen me in my studio for a little while. Uh, I'm currently building my sim in the, the other room, and I haven't released that to you guys yet. Um, so I wanted to show you how I designed my own sim rig. Uh, got it chopped up and made and delivered to my house, just in case you guys too want to design and make your own sim rig. So let's get into it. The first thing you have to do is go to matech.com.de and press download MayCat 64-bit. Uh, this may be in German initially. Uh, you can change that to English. Once you download that, you open it up and click New Metric Drawing. So you're probably wondering, what dimensions do I even use? Um, now, if you're looking at designing and making your own cockpit because most of the cockpits on the market are maybe a little bit too big for you you've got a enclosed space and you have very limited space that you can make a cockpit then this is actually great for you because you know your dimensions already that you're limited to and you can make a cockpit from there if you do have a bit more space my suggestion is probably going over to any sim suppliers uh, website and I'm just gonna use this as an example so for SimLab there is a little download schematics you can download those schematics if you wanted to and then open And this will tell you the vague dimensions of what this SimLab cockpit is. So you can tell this cockpit is 1350 millimeters long. So this is an A5. So we go down here to A5, 500 mil. So we have something like that to go off. I won't go off that in this video uh, and I'll show you why later over here is the extrusion um, you may want to use 4080 you may want to use 120 by 40 for this example I'm going to use 4080 so let's go 1350 long. Go to select. Want to rotate. It's that way. There we are. Let's go 520 long which is a little bit wider than what the SimLab is it GT1 Evo? yeah GT1 Evo is to help you move around you can use the view cube if you wanted to Here we go, another 1350 long. It does snap into place there. For your seat, um, probably depends what seat you're using, but uh, most seats are probably not longer than about 400 mil long. And then you can, if you wanted to, use 80 by 40 it goes to there. Just scroll wheel to zoom out. And I'll just move that over a little bit with the arrow key. Just till it's roundabout center. The good thing about using the 4080 profile 
on where the seat mount you don't need 4080 profile of course um, you can just use 40 by 40 40 by 40 is strong enough but with 40 by 80 you do have the option if the seat is too high you can drop it on its side and lower it or the opposite way around um, if it's not high enough you can raise it like this um, so you get that option with 4080 whereas if you just did 40 by 40 if you need it higher then you'd have to work something else out now uh, for the real deck we probably want to go to I don't know, let's just go to 750. And let's rotate that around like that. We are miles away. Again, just the arrow keys. If you start to go in too far, you'll see that bar go red. So you know that it's a little bit too far now. One little click out. And we're touching. That's perfect. Yeah, zoom out. I just copied that. And now we're going to paste that somewhere. Uh, I think. We can move it around anyway. I find in this software to move around is a little difficult sometimes. Let's move that out. One more in. Yeah. So that's perfectly touching now. Looks about right. Now with the wheel deck, um, it depends what steering wheel you're using. Are you using direct drive, Logitech G29, um, they're all going to be different mounting solutions. Now, um, I'll just run this through there. This will tell how far out we are. Move that forward. Yeah, I think I've got it about spot on there. Uh, touch. That's about right. I think I'm probably maybe a mil out on that. Now, if you do get weird vision and you can't get back to your cockpit, uh, there is a little view reset camera or fit all as well. Uh, fit all is probably what I use the most. Now, what most people do in this scenario is run 40 by 40. Um, let's just say this 40 by 40. Let's just go to 260 long. You do have measurements to work out all the center here. I'm just doing this to show you guys vaguely what to do. Now with something like this, uh, a lot of particularly jack drives, you can get the little angle brackets to go on the, on the sides. Uh, that can mount in here if you wanted to and then side mount your direct drive wheel. If you're using something like a Logitech G29 or something, you may actually be able to just clamp that onto this wheel deck. However, the problem you'll probably have there is it could be a little bit too far forward and you'll have to move the wheel deck 
quite close to you, which will be difficult to get in and out of. Uh, so you can still use these and mount a plate onto this, but obviously make it a little bit wider. Maybe coming through here and mount a, a deck straight onto that. Even if it's, if it's out of like really solid wood or something. And just screw it straight into these with the little T-slots, which I'll show you soon. Really thick solid wood with a G29 is probably going to be fine. Wouldn't use that with a direct drive. Uh, now for the pedal plate. For the pedal plate, I don't know, it's up to you. Let's just go. Two fifty long by two hundred long. Uh, this is particularly if you like the wheel. Sorry, if you like the. Just trying to get that center. There you are. We center. Uh not that way. It snap into location. We center, snap into location. So yeah, so this is particularly if you like the pedal plate to be quite high like I do, especially in like the formula style position. So you can mount a pedal plate up here. You don't obviously have to use this at all. I'm just showing you. You might not want this at all and just lower this, have this mounting down here and maybe to here. If you like a bit of angle. Let's just go 450 long. Too long. And then connect this pedal plate at the bottom. And there we have our pretty basic pedal plate. Now, this is flat. Uh, you will be able to angle these, even if you do use the standard gussets, uh, which is brackets, but they call them gussets in this. Uh, maybe gussets are their real name. I'm not sure. I don't know. Don't care. These little gussets automatically snap some bolts in there. And also the little T-nuts as well. Just snap in there. And if you really zoom in, I zoomed in too much, you can see that the little T nuts are in there. Uh, your bolts. Most people use the socket head cap bolts, uh, not this style. Uh, the socket head cap is a little bit stronger as well. Whoa! With these, you probably don't need too much strength on the seat mount. Whoop. So just one of these is fine. You probably don't need to base it from the other side. Uh, so there. There, there. You're going to have more forces on this 
outer side. So now I believe some companies do run a extrusion from here to here. And you can do that if you like. I personally, when I was building and designing my own cockpit, I didn't do that. And I definitely feel that it's strong enough. So after you've made a vague design that you're kind of happy with, just go ahead and put in, oh, that was incorrect. Select and delete. Sometimes these don't snap into location well. I don't know if that's because it's not a hundred percent lined up or not. Yeah, that one snaps in. So maybe that's just not lined up properly. Let's just put those there. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But let's rotate this anyway. Uh, which way do we need to rotate? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's lined up, which is why those bolts aren't going in. But doesn't matter. Rotate. I think I did that one the wrong way. There we are. Now if I move this, will bolts snap into place? Oh. There we are. Bolts snapped into place. It was just out a little there. Uh, so that means this one needs to come forward a touch. Oh, now it's out there. Doesn't matter. Back at there, back at there. Now the Simlab GT1 cockpit doesn't actually mount the the wheel plate outside of the profile. However, the mounting on the side or the inside will actually be a little stronger than mounting on the top. It will have a little bit less flex. Now, if you wanted to, you can mount one there, mount one at the back there, whichever way you want. It it doesn't really matter. Uh, with this pedal plank. For this, I'm just going to wait, mount one there. 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 You don't have to mount it underneath. Uh, if you didn't want to, you can mount it to the side there there and there it's a bit easier access and the benefit if you do mount them like this is if you wanted to you can also use where are they these if you wanted to instead of the bolts just hook in these little levers. You can get these in a M8 by 16, which is the same M8 by 16 as I, I use in these bolts. This particular one, I don't think this actually has M8 by 16. Uh, it only has M8 by 20. Uh, but you can get M8 by 16. Um, and if you want to move the pedal plate a bit, especially if you're doing something like between a Formula and GT style position, 
uh, having these levers can actually help rather than getting out all the tools to be able to change this pedal plate often. For the uh, under the seat here, I personally actually you can use these 80 by 80s and the 80 by 80s work out to be whoops let's just go under the cockpit so these 80 by 80s at least from my supplier where i'm getting all this from uh, works out to be a little bit cheaper to go 80 by 80 Then uh, two 40 by 40s. Um, in saying that, you probably don't need two 40 by 40s. One 40 by 40 on each corner is probably sufficient. Uh, but me personally, I'm just, I'm running 80 by 80 on my cockpit that I've designed for myself. Another way to do the pedal plate would be um, where is it? the movable joints. Let's just say this one here. So if you wanted to, uh, you can have a 40 by 40 piece coming off here. Uh, obviously not in that rotation. Yeah, that's better. So you have a, a lever here and a 40 by 40 and you can change the the rotation of the pedal plate from that. Um, this would probably work a little bit better if you had this on top or even on the inside because you don't have to make your pedal plate as big. Because if you do it like this, then you have to also put all this outside. you got to use more profile, making your pedal plate bigger. You've got to use more profile. I will just delete that. Now, depending on your, your pedal plate, you might... If you have access to, to a piece of metal that's around about here, that you can drill out and use T-slice to... To drill that into this pedal plate that would be ideal uh, so you can drill the pedal plate out uh, especially for your pedals we will have the little brackets in here if you don't want to make a pedal plate up to to screw into this then my suggestion would actually probably be to get rid of this get rid of that 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 probably at least put in a 40 by 80 the longer you go the more um, of a sort of footrest you can have down the bottom I guess depending on the pedals you're using maybe your pedals already have a footrest most pedals have a mounting point down the bottom and up the top uh, a lot of them also have mounting points somewhere around the middle. So if you wanted to, you can add that. And you can do this probably a few different ways. You can, of course, add just some gussets, some backets.
obviously not in this orientation. You'll probably want to get to these and rotate those that way. And that should allow you to put the bolts through your pedals. If the bolts are, let's say, here, then you can, one, design your pedal plate to go a little bit further inwards. With these brackets, you can just pull this whole bar and sort of pull it inwards, depending on where your bolt holes are and things like that. Um, so it is quite adjustable still. With these gussets, you can mount them, move them side to side, and the whole 40 by 40 bar you can move up and down. Um, so it is quite adjustable. So the other way of mounting the pedal plate as well, if you didn't want to do this, is go into fasteners and go an M80 by 30 T-bolt. And you can put these in here as well. Just like that. Uh, well, even in there if you wanted to. And just line those up with the holes in your pedals. Slide that down and whack some nuts on top of that. Some M8 nuts on top of that. And that'll secure your pedal plate. Of course, you'll probably want some end caps. You can just press this end cap button here. And you can just add end caps wherever you would like them to be. For your gear shifter. Well, let's go 400 long. Again, you can run something on the side to the bottom there. There, there, there. There and there. You can also make this top piece uh, 40, 80 and lay it on its side if you want to, if you want a little bit more uh, length on the sides here. Put some feed in. There, there. There. It's now sitting up off the ground a little bit. Make had already kind of adjusted that to be the floor now. And there you have a basic uh, aluminium profile cockpit for your sim racing needs. Uh, as you can see, that didn't really take too long to make. Now, one of the other things to think about when designing your own cockpit is you can buy things from suppliers like SimLab. So we've got SimLab accessories here. They've got keyboard trays, they've got wheel decks. If you wanted to not use this wheel mount here, um, wheel deck, should I say, and use a bit, I guess you could say better wheel deck, um, especially if you're using something that mounts to the bottom like that, um, you can just go and buy that wheel deck from a P1X V2, and you can just mount it into your cockpit. The thing you got to look at though is the dimensions. Uh, you got to make sure your dimensions are correct. This is 600 mil width. So you got to make sure you got 600 mil between here and here. Which for this cockpit, as you can see, 600 mil in length. 
which is why I made this 520. Uh, it can easily be swapped out with a Simlab P1X wheel deck if you wanted it to. Another little tip, you can increase the sizes of these just by doing something like that. And as you can see, it just extends. But I'll lower that back down to 200. You do have different caster wheels, uh, bucket seat brackets, all that. You can buy it not just from SimLab. Uh, you can buy them from a lot of different suppliers. For your, your seat mount, you'll probably want to... Get some fasteners. I'm using M8 spring balls. So they need to go in there. Think about everything you're mounting to the cockpit. And just whack those in there. Maybe you don't want to use these gussets on the pedal plate. Just whack in some of these. And then just move these bars up and down, depending where your bolt holes are, instead of going through here. But with these, you just have to make sure your length on your bolts are correct. Whereas with these, it doesn't matter so much. Now, if you're mounting your pedal plate like this and you want it to have some angle adjustment, there's a few things you can do. These gussets normally have like little locators on the back of them. Uh, depending on the brand, you can snap them off. Um, some of them you can't. You have to grind them off, you know, like a belt sand or something. Angle grinder. <laughs> I may or may not have done that. Anyway, or there is another option for your pedal plate that will allow you to angle, right? They're especially for angles. I'm just gonna go to Matitis here. Especially if you're in the UK, you can use this. I can't in Australia. Well, I probably can actually, but it's probably more expensive. Now these here, the angle clamp 40s, These will allow you to, oh, I'm not sure if they, more images, give you anything. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Not a great photo, but anyway, uh, these will allow you to just bolt something and then angle it. So like you see here, actually, if you wanted to, You could mount those somewhere here and then have your pedal plate angled out and you also don't need the additional bolts and all that with these bolts and t-nuts that you don't have to buy with these because uh, you're only using one bolt and t-nut for the entire thing and there's a little lip that goes around at the bottom so they're pretty good my suggestion to you would be have a look at the supplier you're potentially going to use in your area. See all the brackets and gussets and connectors and things that they have available and uh, design your rig with that in mind and the seat. Again, a lot of different suppliers have them. You, you could just get actual race seats if you wanted to. You could get old car seats if you wanted to. Manage to bolt them in here. Maybe you have one sitting at home. Once you're done designing your cockpit and you're pretty happy with what it looks like, you've double, tripled and quadrupled checked all your measurements and everything's going to fit correctly and, and your seat's going to sit correctly. Your pedal plate is going to fit. 
Obviously you don't want to be recutting everything. It'll end up being more expensive than just buying one. You can go to get bill of materials over here. Yeah. Uh, to get bill of materials. Let's just call it YouTube sim build materials. And then here we have our bill of materials. Gives you a, a view. All the materials you need. Uh, it gives you dimensions of everything. And this can help you put it together as well. So once you do have everything cut, and you go, oh, oh, what's this bit of profile here? 16. There's a bit suggested profile cuts. Um, and you can 16. 16 is 520 long. So you know when you've got stuff here 520 long, that's for there. Um, it's It helps having suggested profile cuts on. It also lets you know how much usage. A lot of profile places uh, actually sell the profile in six meter lengths so it shows your wastage then so maybe if you wanted to oh yeah there's something here we might just be able to put in 40 by 40 and that way you use up the whole length of 40 by 40 if your particular supplier uh, doesn't accept access once you have all this that will allow you to go to Somewhere like Matitis, um, slot profiles, the profile you would like, cutting complete bar, stand length, uh, or your desired length, uh, cutting to whatever millimeter you like, 250, it doesn't matter, and you can put everything you need uh, from your bill of materials into here and then get a roundabout quote if Matitis is uh, close to you, uh, ships to you, etc. Depending where you are in the world. Um, I know in Australia, in my particular state, there's not many companies that are like this, that have sites as good as this. Um, me personally, I had to just get my bill of materials um, and send just the bill of materials to a few suppliers around how much to cut this many lengths of this, 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 this. These brackets I need 100 of, 200 of. Oh, I need 104 M8 by 16 socket head cap screws. Um, I would suggest doing a bit more, just in case you run out. Um, at least probably 10, 20 more um, screws and brackets and things like that. Um, it, it gives you... You don't want to be short. So yeah, that's how you design a, a cockpit pretty quickly. Uh, I actually designed and built a cockpit quicker than what a normal company can actually get me a sim. Uh, I may do another video on uh, like some triple monitor mounts and different things as well. Uh, if that interests you, uh, let me know. Hit the like button and all that stuff. Uh, such a YouTuber. Hopefully one day very soon I'll also be able to show you uh, my actual sim that I have mostly built in the next room. That may be the next video. Hopefully. Maybe. So yes, anyway, hit that like button if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next video.